Welcome, welcome. For those who don't know me, I'm Dr. Brock Van Dyke. I'm the chiropractor at Solid Foundation Chiropractic here in Windsor, Ontario. I know there's some other docs tuning in right now, and uh, some of the other docs sent out the information about the workshop to their patients. So I'd like to welcome you here uh, from Milton or across Ontario, wherever you are. So I'd like to welcome you to our posture correction workshop. This is a workshop that we usually teach in the office. Uh, usually it's in a big group setting. Uh, you know, there's uh, lots of energy and um, we're able to go through all the information to be able to work on correcting your posture. So where I put this workshop in your care, usually I like to add this workshop within the first month of a corrective care plan. So uh, you, you start getting adjusted and we're adjusting your spine, but in the workshop, we're adjusting your mind. So this is a workshop where we can do that. All right, so are you ready? So I had the music on, let's go. All right, so we're gonna get ready to go. The first thing, when you wake up in the morning, there's gonna be a workshop booklet that I'll send you out. So let's say you're reading that at nighttime and the booklet fell to the ground. As soon as you take that first step out of bed, <laughs> you put your foot on the booklet, you say, oh, okay, Dr. Brock wants me to warm up my spine a little bit. Here we go. So we call these the spinal cord tension exercises. So, um, you know, good, a good one to do just to warm up before you start this. Usually my personal trainer has me do it. So you just take a broomstick Put it behind your, your back. And this one seems to really get the upper back. So this is good for people who work at a desk and uh, good for people who are doing online schooling. And so you can just start to rotate. So do it about 20 times. So just one and two and three and four, right? All the way up to 20. This is a good way to get your spine going in the morning. All right, so maybe not first out of bed, you know, uh, get, get moving first, but within the first half hour to an hour, uh, that's a good one to just kind of get your spine mobilized and, and get going. So if you look on the screen here, you'll see the, the first one is to raise your hands in the air, wave them like you just don't care. All right, so we're gonna bend our knees and so follow the picture all the way around. So we're going to bend our knees and, and bring our hands all the way down and back. All right, and then straighten out your knees. Okay, and then bend the knees again, and you're gonna bring your hands all the way back up. All right, so you can do that a couple times, do that about three times. And then another one you can do, if you see the picture right beside me, you're going to uh, put your hands in the air, all right? You're gonna squat down, okay? And then you're gonna take your hands and go towards the one side, and then you're gonna squat down again and go towards the other side. All right, so these are just some exercises to be able to, uh, to get, get your spine moving. All right, well, you can see in the workshop, usually we'd have everyone stand up right now. So what I want you to do right now, everyone stand up. Yep, you, everyone stand up. Okay, put your hands in the air, wave them like you just don't care. Okay, so bend your knees and bring your hands all the way down and all the way to the back. Okay, now straighten your legs. You might feel a little pull there. All right, we're gonna come all the way up and back. Okay, so you can take a seat now. All right, so that's one that you can do first thing in the morning. All right, well, when it comes to corrective chiropractic, corrective chiropractic is a little different than uh, diversified chiropractic. There's different types of chiropractic techniques. And so, you know, you, you might think that every chiropractor practice is the same. But, so they, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's chiropractic that's called Thompson Techniques. That's one that I do, working on checking your leg lengths and balancing your nervous system neurologically. Right? There's techniques that just focus on the upper part of the neck. Okay, so it's a very scientific look at just the top bone in the upper neck, uh, maybe looking at an x-ray and, and how that upper neck bone. And so there's been some studies looking at blood pressure uh, and how it deals with the upper neck, right? So that, that technique is amazing. So there's one guy in Windsor who practices that technique. Uh, in, in Windsor, there, there's two, uh, uh, two people who do corrective chiropractic. So it's me and another doctor in Essex County. So if you're looking for corrective chiropractic, there's not too many options in Windsor. A lot of chiropractors do um, they, they do diversified technique and that's a technique that looks at motion. Okay. So that's, it's just based on motion. So you, there's usually not a neurological uh, component where we're checking your leg legs and seeing where your primary areas of misalignment are. But corrective chiropractic uh, focuses on actually restore, working on restoring the curvatures to your spine. Okay. And it's all done in a mirror image. So if you've been to the office, you've already been educated about what chiro corrective chiropractic is. So uh, I'm adjusting you right now in a mirror image. So if you wondered, why are you laying face down, 
right? If your head's further forward, then we're not going to flex your head forward and rotate the spine. I'm going to have you lay down. We're going to bring the head back a bit, and I'm going to adjust you back like that. And if there's any rotation needed, then you would just turn your head, right? And then we'll adjust down. And so I use the drop piece. So the drop piece allows the, um, when, when we I deliver the adjustment, it drops down to its bottom point, And then that's where the adjustment happens, right at the terminal point of the, of the drop piece. So you know Newton's law? Yeah, so a, a misalignment will remain in motion unless it's acted on by equal or opposite force. That's what Newton said. All right, so when, when, that, when we adjust it, right, it all drops down, it hits the bottom of the drop piece, and that's the one I have my hand on, and then that is the one where the adjustment happens. So it's a specific adjustment to a certain segment, and we base the, the adjustments uh, when it comes to corrective care on what your x-ray would look like or your posture pictures look like. Okay, so when you come to the office, I'd like you to uh, um, go through your posture picture. So I'll have your, your posture picture printed out for you. And then uh, I'll have your x-ray, at least your neck x-ray printed out for you if we have one of you. And you'll be able to see what a normal curve looks like. And then you'll see what your curve looks like. And then you'll know how much work that you have to do. All right, well, you know, health is a journey and we're all on that journey. Okay, so when we look at how our spine is, you see from the front, our spine should be straight. Okay, and if the, the spine is crooked, right, like a scoliosis, then maybe I'll have you lay on a foam block. Okay, so this type of block is called a scoli roll. Okay, and uh, this is a block that if the curve is going one way, then we can actually have you lay over the scoli roll and it can help to push the spine back another way. So that's pretty cool. Um, what I have you do when you're at the table, so if you ever walk by and you see someone laying on a foam block, the foam block is a more comfortable way to adjust you over, uh, over to bend your spine the other way. So we're basically adjusting you in a mirror image to promote motion in the spine and to free up any nerves that might be entrapped, any nervous interference to be able to open that up. All right, so I hope you have a good idea of what corrective chiropractic is. So the neck is called the cervical area, the mid back is called your thoracic, and your low back is called your lumbar. So you see that, and if you look at the picture right here in the center, you see that, uh, there's actually a, a scientific study called corrective or sorry, called chiropractic biophysics. And that's all the research done on what the proper curve should be, right? The ideal spine uh, it, uh, and your neck should be a 42.5 degree curve. Okay. Usually we just say a 42 degree curve and uh, you look at how the rest of the curves look, right? So all of those, all those numbers and everything on the spine, so they can actually measure what the ideal spine for proper loading would be. All right. And that's just really cool. And so that's what's happening when you get adjusted at the table. I'm thinking about what your x-ray looks like, what your posture picture looks like, what you're, what you're showing neurologically as well on that given day, and also what symptoms you're, you're presenting with. But chiropractic is not, uh, not meant to just chase symptoms because the problem could be coming from the pelvis, right? But you're feeling the symptoms up here in your mid-back, right? So uh, if the problem is, is down low, in the pelvis, then the treatment is not to just uh, rub on the back and uh, to adjust the back, the upper part of the back, it's to correct the pelvis. And then the mid-back problem won't be there. All right, so sometimes the area that you might feel pain is not the area that I adjust at that time. All right, here we go. Let's get into some good information. All right, when we look at how the nervous system is controlled, right, your spine should be straight from the front, the nerves in your neck run down your arms, the nerves in your low back all run down your legs. So you see the other picture that shows here that the, the nerves in the neck also run out to supply your, um, your, your upper part of the body, right, so your organs, you see nerves going out to the immune system, you see nerves coming down to the heart, uh, to, to the lungs, right, coming down even to the small and large intestine, right, and those are all coming from the upper part. That's really cool. So sometimes people think that in the low back is the, the nerves in the low back only control things that happen in the low back, but also things that are happening in the upper part, right? Those also come down to supply the organs that are in the front of your body, right? That's just amazing. When you think about how, uh, how amazing we're designed, the more you study about the body, the more you realize that definitely we were created uh, to be able to withstand trauma. We were able to uh, to just created so amazing and the the part that I really liked is when I got a skull 
So if you, if you want me to show it to you in the office, uh, we'll take off Dr. Skelly's head, right? And you look at all the little holes that come off of the, 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 the brain and go down to supply things happening in your face. And it's just so amazing how we're designed. And so the more you study about it, the more you just get so and so amazed how, how good our body is at healing, at uh, performing normal function. So that's all what's happening. And so chiropractic helps to improve that function of the embodied. Well, not really, to more so to remove any interference so your body can do the job. That, that, that's a better way to say it. So, so you ever heard of the saying that, that nature needs no help? It just needs no interference. And so that's what chiropractic does. All right. So when we adjust you, what do I say after you're done? I say the power's on, right? And so you have, uh, you have Niagara Falls power flowing through the body after that. So you can get by on the trickle, like I say, but we want that Niagara Falls power flowing through the body. Okay, so take a look at one of our patients here. So you can see that in February, right, the bones are kind of popping out of her neck. Right, we look at that picture from the side. Her head was further forward. So this is a posture picture and we mark the different spots on your body. So if you haven't had a, po a posture picture taken, then ask your doc to, uh, to take one of you uh, or um, you can also send the pictures to us at the office and then uh, I'll mark it and I'll send it back to you. All right, the, the email address is info at solidfoundation.ca. And so we can mark those pictures, send it back to you and just kind of show you where your posture is at that time. You just have to have someone take a picture from the front and then a picture from the side. Okay, of just your normal standing posture and I'll mark it and I'll send it back to you and I'll show you, and it will show you exactly what your posture looks like. But you can see by June what her posture looked like, right? So that's adjusting her in a mirror image, working on bringing the head back and now she's just in a normal, comfortable resting position and a lot better posture. Okay, so I have a picture of her in the next February where she's almost completely back to that line. So that's really cool. But if we look at the numbers, just kind of comparing, we see that her head was forward, right, by three inches. And now by June, she's down to 1.71. Okay, when we average out everything, four inches down to three inches. And so that's all coming back. And we want to make sure those numbers are zero. Okay, so when you take a look at your posture picture, uh, compare these numbers maybe to what your posture looks like. And then uh, we'll be able to kind of set some goals. Okay, so it says to live a long, active, energetic life, few things matter more than good posture. And that's so true. Have you ever seen uh, someone sprinting, right? But they're like 90 years old. Have you ever seen like a 90 year old and maybe they're hunched over and they're, they're, they're sprinting? I haven't. <laughs> right? The people that are sprinting are up like this with good posture. All right, so a few things matter more than good posture. All right, posture really plays a role in the pressure on the nervous system. Uh, having bad posture also affects the joints as well, causes more degeneration in the body. And when you look at this study, this is in the Journal of American Geriatric Society that says that people that have more hunchback type posture, that they, in this study, they actually died sooner than the people who had better posture. Right? So definitely that's an important one to think about. And you've seen that study already if you've been in the office. So let's talk about the, the, the tools that we need to be able to help. So who has eaten soup with a fork? All right, put in the chat right now if that's you. Have you ever tried to eat soup with a fork? <laughs> I haven't, but let me tell you, it's not the right tool for the job. So here are some tools that we'll talk about that are right for the job, okay? And you know what? Every tool is not meant for everybody, okay? Every home care device is not meant for every, every person's spine. And so we'll talk about in the office and actually I'll have a prescription for you of the tools that are recommended for you based on your spine. So usually I would give that out to you at the, the workshop and you'd have your posture picture, your x-ray and uh, the recommendation for you. And then you have the opportunity to get any of the tools that you want. All right, uh, but we'll, we'll do that when you come into the office. I'll have that ready for you. Just let me know and then we'll prepare that. Okay, so let's talk about the first one <clears throat> is, the, is the, I call it the posture correction pillow, but it's really called the therapeutica pillow. So uh, who, who likes their pillow? I know there's some people who really love their pillow, but you know, there's some people who don't. All right, there's a lot of people who hate the pillow that they're sleeping on. And so in our office, we have two different types of pillows. And some people uh, have asked me in the office, well, what, what's the difference? We're going to go through all of those differences. But this is called the Therapeutica pillow. And when I go to sleep, this is the one I sleep on. When I go to sleep, I just rest and I think, 
the people who aren't laying on this pillow are totally missing out because I get really good sleep. All right, I get really good sleep. Just, just relax and I can fall asleep within a couple minutes, All right? At the family parties, ask my family. When I put my mind to it, I'm out. <laughs> Definitely ask my brother David because he has a really comfortable couch. <laughs> All right, so there's another tool. There's another tool that you can put behind your neck. And so this is a tool that sometimes you'll see people uh, in the office using. All right, so you're actually going to extend back just like this. You're gonna extend your hands and you're going to extend your neck. And so what it's doing is it's pulling on your neck. Your head's going back, but then you're pulling your neck forward. So it's a really good way to mobilize the spine and it's a good way to get some extension in the neck. All right, so that's a pretty cool one. When you're in the office, uh, ask me about that and you can, you can try it out and see how it feels. The next one right beside it is called the commuter. So this is the commuter. It's actually a pillow for the car. So sometimes people don't like their headrest. Maybe the headrest is really extended. Uh, maybe your headrest is not comfortable. And so this is something that you can actually slip right behind your head and it kind of snuggles your neck while you sleep. So with this, the, the commuter, Michelle got this for me when I was uh, driving on the 401 all the time. Uh, sometimes you're just tired and you have to pull over, right? So uh, I would pull over and I'd lay the seat back, but then my neck would feel like it has a kink in it, right? So I grab, I take off my jacket and put it behind my neck so my neck's comfortable, but then I'd freeze, right? Because it's cold. So this is a perfect solution to be able to just put it right behind, it attaches to your headrest and it just kind of snuggles your neck. And it's actually made by uh, uh, the same distributor that distributes the Therapeutica pillow. So it really supports the neck, just like the Therapeutica pillow would do while you're sleeping. And so the dental roll is here right up here. So I'll show you the, the dental roll. There's a whole section on the dental roll, but this is a neck orthotic. Okay. So this is not a, a pillow, but this is a neck orthotic that you'd put behind your neck like this lady is doing here in the picture. And you can see that she's extending over it. And eventually you'll, you'll start at one minute, but eventually you'll get up to 15 to 20 minutes when you're using it. Okay. That's called the dinner roll, not the dinner roll. I know it's almost dinner time, but it's called the dinner roll for your low back. Uh, if you have a low back rest in your seat, so maybe you're sitting uh, at your office chair a little bit more frequently now, all uh, right, homeschooling and, and, and working from home. And so it's important you have a good low back rest. Okay, so we'll talk about that. And so you see the, the picture right here. This is actually a huge foam wedge that you would extend over. You'd kind of lay on top of and extend your head over. And it's pretty good for people that have a curve going the wrong way in the neck. So in general, your neck should be an extension. Right? It should have a good C-shaped banana curve in your neck. Uh, but this is a wedge and it kind of has a strap that can pull down and, and traction on to give you some, some uh, extra stretch like that. And it's meant to help change the structure of the spine and not just to stretch the muscles. And then the next one is one that's uh, made for the mid back. Okay, so if you know someone who has a lot of rounding in their spine, then uh, it, when, when we look and if your assessment, you have that rounding uh, in the spine like that, then this is the tool that you're going to extend over and it actually pinpoints the certain spot that's rounding the wrong way and helps to uh, get it into extension going the, going the right way. Okay, so you should have some curve there, right? Uh, but it shouldn't be uh, ultra rounded. This one is really cool. Check out that guy. So he ha actually has uh, a strap around his neck. So he has a strap just like this, similar. He has it all the way out and he has it attached into the door. <laughs> I call this the, the torture chamber device. So he has it actually uh, attached into the door and then he has a, a, a head strap on and a weight behind him. He's actually pulling his head back and he's tractioning his neck forward. <laughs> Right, so that was, I call that the tor torture chamber device. That was the first <laughs> device. This is the next more and more new and improved device to be able to, to do that two-way type traction. All right, but you know what? That same guy, I'll show you the x-ray of him and you can see that it's actually pretty effective. All right, if you stay to the end, I'll show you that x-ray. It's gonna be a good treat. Okay, so let's talk about the habits. This slide alone will change your life. Every single time I do this workshop, I hear someone say, you know what, that thing that you talked about on your habits, I changed that habit and within a couple days, my pain is gone. So let's talk about your habits. Are you ready? Okay, so when it comes to your habits, then who stands on one leg a lot? 
right? Is that you? The person standing on one leg more? <laughs> yeah, if you're the one standing on one leg, then uh, try to stand on two legs. Just try to be more conscious of standing on two legs. That tip alone can, can start to change the low back pain that you have, the hip pain that you have. Okay, so then let's talk about people carrying purses, right? Really heavy purses, right? So you wear a purse and let's say your purse weighs about 15 pounds. So let's say 10, 10, 15 pounds. And so you're having to contract 10 to 15 pounds worth of, worth of, of muscle to hold up your purse on that side. The same kind of thing with backpacks. So the backpacks, when you have the kid has a backpack, they're being pulled forward. So what do they do? They bring their head forward, right? They, they move their body forward. Yeah. So uh, with backpacks, uh, a good recommendation is uh, if you're in, uh, if you're in grade school, then you should have no more than 10% of your body weight in your backpack. So parents uh, grab the backpack, weigh the backpack and then weigh your child and see the backpack should be no more than 10 pounds, uh, sorry, 10%. And then for high school and university, it should be no more than 15% of your body weight. Okay, so then uh, what about guys sitting on their wallets, right? So the guy sitting on their wallet, you take that wallet out, you're definitely going to have less back pain. Okay, I recommend just putting it in your front pocket. All right, so I'm always paranoid when I'm driving that if the, the car were to flip over and I have my, my wallet in the center console that, you know, the paramedics may not be able to know who I am or something at the hospital with my health curb. So I usually keep it. <laughs> I know it's weird, uh, but I, I keep it right in my front pocket when I'm driving or in my, uh, my, my sweater pocket when I'm driving. All right. But what about the phone, phone habits, right? So you put the phone to the one side, right? And you get a kink in your neck, right? So then maybe you switch it up. And so I do recommend a, a headset. Uh, definitely if you're at work, uh, getting a headset, if you're talking on the phone a lot, definitely to, to get a headset and then how you're getting in your vehicle. Okay, so if this is you, if you have a really low car, right, then you kind of fall into your car, right? So you kind of just jam down one hip into the car and then you say, oh, right? So just after you got adjusted and you're feeling good, you go and you jump into your car and your car is lower and you mess up your hip getting into your car. So the way that I recommend to get into your car, instead of just jumping in with your, left, in, with your right leg, to actually put your tur turn perpendicular to your car, Right? Put your bottom down in the car and then bring your legs together as you spin in the car like that. Yeah, so that's how I recommend getting in the car. And that tip alone has helped a lot of people. Right? You might think it's weird, right? That's, that's like how the old person gets into their car. But don't mess up your hip. Right? Just get in your car slowly. Um, but th this recommendation doesn't really matter if you're getting up into your car. Right? It's more so if gravity is taking you down and jamming your hip down like that. So we have a couple comments, right? Michelle says that the commuter pillow is so amazingly comfortable, and that's true. That's very true. All right, if you have any comments, just put them in the chat, and I can respond to them. Okay, so these habits alone can really help you. All right, so let's talk about the low back rest. With the low back rest, I have one here. And so Michelle could not make it without this back vitalizer. So this is the second generation. Uh, I also have the third generation, and that's the one that we sell at the office. This is the low back rest that I recommend uh, for your office chair and for your car. So when Michelle was pregnant, we were on the way to go see her mom uh, in the GTA, and we made it right up to the highway, and, and she said, oh no, I forgot the back vitalizer. And we had to turn all the way, come back to the office and to get the back vitalizer. So that back vitalizer definitely saved, uh, <laughs> definitely saved her back when she was pregnant. But I do recommend it because you can, you can blow more air into it or less air and it actually conforms to what your back looks like at that time. So the, the, the um, back vitalizer definitely keeps, keeps you, keeps your back supported. Uh, if you look at the picture here, it says that you can sit on the back vitalizer and so you can use it for proprioceptive exercises. So when someone starts to mention that as they're getting adjusted, that their spine starts to feel more loose and maybe that they start to hear it popping a little bit more, that's when I know it's time to start stabilizing on the, uh, the back vitalizer. So that's when I'll have you sit down and we'll do some wobble exercises. All right, so the wobble exercises are included in, in your workshop booklet that I'll give you in the office. And then uh, if you look at the, the uh, wobble exercises, sometimes people do it on the sitting disc, the active sitting disc. And these are the wobble exercises where you're gonna wobble forward and backward. You can wobble side to side. So you're actually sitting on this like a whoopee cushion, right? 
So it's like an air pocket that you're sitting on. So you're wobbling forward and backward, side to side, right? In, in an X shape pattern and then like a figure eight pattern as well. So that's something that you can do and that's actually working to stabilize the spine. So if you ever feel like your spine's getting too loose, just let me know at the, at the table. That's when we need to start doing some stabilization exercises. Okay. So when it comes to sleep, I have a secret. The secrets to better sleep, let's take a look. All right, who sleeps with this many pillows? You know what? My cousin does. <laughs> this is not him. <laughs> but when I went to my cousin's one time, she fell out of bed and she hurt her ankle. And so she wanted me to come over to adjust her ankle. And so I, I come over and I see nine pillows. Not one, not two, but nine pillows on her bed. And I said, do you sleep with nine pillows? She said, yeah. So I, she says she puts three on one side so she doesn't fall that way. She puts three on the other side so she doesn't roll over the other way and fall out of bed that way. And she puts three pillows behind her neck. And so just the other day in the office, she was saying, Dr. Brack, I don't know why my, my head's so forward in the posture picture. I don't know why. <laughs> I said, that's the reason why you have so much forward head posture. You're putting three pillows behind your head. And, she, and I said, just take out one pillow tonight and just sleep with two and see how you do. Right, so I adjusted her ankle and uh, by the time I left, she was walking up the stairs. She did amazing. But when she slept that night, she slept with two pillows and she said it was the best sleep that she ever had. <laughs> wow, nine pillows. Right, so if your bed looks like this, don't sleep with you know, three pillows or more behind your head. You should have one comfortable pillow that's measured for you. And that's why I sleep on the Therapeutica pillow. So definitely sleep is important because that's when you're healing, okay? So you're, you're uh, regenerating normal tissue, right? You're digesting, you're sleeping, you're healing, right? So that's what happens when you're asleep. So who sleeps like this? Yep, yep, sleeping face down. Yeah, so you know what happens? So sleeping face down wouldn't be a problem if we had to breathe, right? But we have to breathe. So, you know, we have to breathe, so uh, we have to turn our head, right? And then when you turn your head, then that's the problem. So it's okay to stretch for 30 seconds, right? It's okay to, to do the stretches, you know, for 15 to 30 seconds, but it's not okay to stretch for eight hours. So that rule, right everything in moderation that's still uh, important even when it comes to posture correction everything in moderation too much water will kill you right water is a good thing but if you drink too much of it it'll kill you okay and that actually happened in detroit remember that water drinking contest right where the one guy died and, and the other one i think uh, was in the hospital uh, yeah so everything in moderation so even sleep <laughs> So it's too much stretching is a bad thing. So that's why sleeping face down is not good. All right. So who sleeps on their side? All right. Let me know in the chat. Do you sleep on your side? Okay. Well, if you sleep on your side, then that's good. But you should have a pillow that keeps you in that neutral position. Okay. The neutral position. So you should have a pillow that's measured from the side of the neck right out to the shoulder, the edge of the shoulder, so the bone. So not so the muscle part, but the actual bone. And so there's a measurement tool that I'll use, and that's what will actually help you uh, to, to know that if you should sleep on an average pillow or a petite pillow or even a large or an extra large pillow. Most people do land in the average category, though. All right. So I say, you know, I, I sleep on an average pillow, but I'm not an average guy. <laughs> All right, so sleeping on your side, you see how their spine is perfectly in alignment. So what happens is, if your pillow is too big, then you'll do this. If your pillow is too small, then you'll do this. And then what happens? Then you want to put your arm up like that to bring your head back to neutral position. Okay, so if you sleep with your arm above your head, then your pillow is too small. All right, so we'll get you measured in the office or uh, your doctor will get you measured. Okay, so that's what we're going to do for sleeping. And then sleeping on your side, if you sleep on your side, it's good to put a, a pillow between your knees, right? So some people are really skinny and they have bony knees, right? But some people have bigger thighs and then uh, what happens is that uh, their, their, their hips are kind of uncomfortable. So sometimes the, the, the legs are bigger at the top, but the, near their knees, they're more skinny. And what happens is they really pull the side of their hip and they end up getting hip pain. 
right? So based on the shape of your hips, and everyone's shaped differently, you should put a pillow between your knees. Maybe you need a little bit more or less of a pillow. But uh, you can have someone uh, look at you, put a pillow between your knees, and your, your, your hip should be, uh, should be flat. It should be parallel to your bed or parallel to the ground. Right, so if your leg is slanting down, then you're probably pulling on your muscles a little bit more. And remember, stretching for eight hours while you sleep is a bad thing. Okay, so you just want to be in a good neutral position and a relaxed position for the muscles. Okay, and then so that's a pretty good position. I do sleep on my side, right on the therapeutic pillow. All right, but who sleeps like this? Sleeping on your back, <laughs> right? drooling yeah so if you sleep with so many pillows behind your head it's not a good thing so you should you should actually be in a nice comfortable position and you should have a pillow that actually maintains the curvature that's in your spine so the therapeutic pillow you can see the different contours right so this is the pillow that I sleep on uh, this this pillow supports your neck when you're sleeping in the middle that's for sleeping on your back okay so it actually supports the neck curvature right that's pretty cool and then um, the next one is when you roll up onto your side, then that's where we measure from the side of your neck right up to the edge of your shoulder and you roll up onto one side or you roll onto the other. So you can see some of the characteristics of this pillow, right? It, it says that uh, it has the raised side profile. It's contoured for your head so it doesn't push on your ear too much. And as well, you see on the side, that little, that little bar right, right there, uh, it's actually a little cutout there. And so that's so it doesn't push on your jaw. So maybe you sleep with a CPAP machine and you need that little extra give on the edge. Well, that, that's actually cut out right there. So I said, you know what? They thought of everything when it came to this pillow. I wanted a pillow that, had, that keeps me in good extension, that supports my curvature, so I don't lose my curvature over the years as I'm sleeping. I wanted a pillow that would support me in neutral position while I slept. I wanted a pillow that, that had good support, that didn't, not like a feather or cotton pillow that just crushes to the ground after like, <laughs> crushes to the bed after about a month, right? I wanted a pillow that supported me. And so this pillow uh, ha has a warranty on it um, and uh, it's a pretty good pillow. It's the pillow that I get really good sleep on. Okay. And so when you look at the different pillows, um, you see, you have your traditional pillow. So take a look, your traditional pillow, um, you're on your laying on your back, right? It doesn't really support your curve. And when you're laying on your side, it feels good when you first buy it. But over time, what happens, right? Your neck kinks to the side. So this pillow you have to keep replacing, but they're pretty cheap, okay? So then you go to the pillow that's maybe like a, a cervical pillow that might have like one little contour or something. And so that pillow, uh, it, it may be good for side sleeping, but it's not really good at, at supporting your, cur your full curvature when you're on your back, okay? But the Therapeutica pillow actually solves all of those different problems. So take a look, when you're on your back, it supports your curve. And when you roll up onto the side, it's actually there to keep you in neutral position. Okay, so let's take a look at the different parts of the pillow. So you can see uh, Lindy's demonstrating here that there's a nice contour to the pillow, right? So the pillow just looks really soft. And so that's the part where you're gonna put your head at nighttime and you can see the flexible side panel. So I wanted to show you that because that actually helps your jaw. Sometimes when I sleep on a regular cervical pillow, I feel like I'm getting TMJ problem. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's the pillow. So let's take a look at how you would get measured for it. So when you come into the office, just ask me and I'll measure you for it. And so based right at the edge of the neck, right out to the edge of the bone, we're going to find on the measurement tool what size of pillow that you should be on. All right. Oh, it's time to go to sleep. So when you lay down on it, you'll land right in the middle of the pillow. Okay. Then in the middle of the night, right, after a couple of minutes, you roll over onto your side and you see how it supports her, her, her neck there. Keep her in neutral position. And then if you roll up onto the other side, you're on the other side of the pillow. Right. So it's pretty cool if you want to cuddle. One person can lay on one side, one person can lay on the other. So this is just demonstrating when, when there's a, a really small or no pillow, you see how her neck is, is tilted down. Now that is neutral position there. She actually has a tattoo, right, that has two lines there. And you can see now her head is, is her pillow is too big, right? And so her head was up like that. So now if the pillow is too small, you'll put your arm up in the air, okay? And so that, that shows different ways. So here's again showing you her laying on her side with her head tilted down with a small pillow, right? So you need something that's a little bit bigger. Now this is a neutral position, 
Okay, so that neutral position pillow is good, but then if we bring the headpiece up too high, right, that's what your pillow does, and it keeps you, keeps you up like that, and both of those, too low or too high, can cause some kinks in the neck. All right, so come get your Therapeutica pillow, all right, and have a good night's sleep. Okay, so that's a, a Therapeutica pillow. There's also a water pillow that we have in the office, and I recommend the water pillow for people who have a reverse curve in the neck. So if your curve's going the wrong way on the inside, then I recommend the water pillow because it will conform to where your neck is at that time while we're working on changing your posture. Okay, working on that neck curve, laying on the dental roll, doing some exercises, getting adjusted in a mirror image. Okay, so sleeping on your back. For people who have low back pain, this is a good recommendation. Uh, sometimes putting a very small pillow underneath your knees just to have a little bend in your knees is a, a good way to uh, be able to, to take away the low back pain. Okay, so a very light pillow under your head and a little light pillow underneath your knees. Sometimes that can help your low back pain. Okay. So when it comes to mattresses, people always ask me, Dr. Brock, uh, what's the best mattress to sleep on? And you know what my answer is? Right? I always say the recommendation for a mattress is as firm as you can stand. So what does that mean? That is different for everybody. That's why they have different mattresses. So they'll have, you know, this is a Stern and Foster mattress. This is the Cadillac of mattresses. I want to put this in here because when I was doing some research at Tepperman's, the lady was walking me around showing me all the different mattresses and talking to me about uh, all the different uh, aspects of the mattress. And she said that President Obama and President Trump uh, sleep on, on this mattress uh, when they're in the White House, right? So this, this, one, this mattress looks so amazing, you don't even want to put a, a sheet on it, right? It looked, in, in person, it looks like the Cadillac of mattresses, right? So this is pretty cool. I just wanted to, to show you what it looks like. But a good, a good thing is a higher coil count is better because if you just have, think about having like, you know, 100 coils in your mattress, right? And it's kind of like poking into your side. But now imagine your weight being distributed over 1,000, right? Or 1,600 uh, actual coils. Okay, so I do recommend a coil mattress. Uh, foam mattresses have come a long way, uh, but I don't recommend foam mattresses. I do recommend a coil mattress. And if you want to add a little bit more comfort, you can play with what the pillow top looks like. So that the, the solid foundation is the coils in your mattress. And if you take a look at the Stern and Foster here, you see a, every mattress would have a different pattern sewn in on the top. They might have like little, uh, little buttons there on the top that are sewn in. And so that actually is not just for, for looks, it actually adjusts the firmness of the mattress, the, 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 the firmness of the pillow top. So just think about it, if you have uh, all of these sewn parts, the more sewn uh, threads in the mattress, then the more firm the, the pillow top's going to be. The more, the, the less, yeah, so the less uh, sewing in the top of the mattress, the more fluffy the top is going to be but you still have that good support on the bottom so that's why i do recommend a, a good coil mattress okay so this is a king's down mattress this is the kind that i would sleep on uh, with this uh, i have two of these mattresses and um, the king's down they every company comes out with a, a different mattress so i called uh, so when i first got married we walked into the the store uh, sleep country and they said give me your most firm mattress and he pointed it out, I laid down on it, and I said, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> and Michelle says, well, let's look around. Let's try out some other mattresses. So like 45 minutes later, we said, all right, that, we went back to the Kings Down, and he said, all right, we'll take it. Okay? So you have to do your research. And you know what research is when you're, you're getting a mattress? Just laying down on the mattress and just laying there. Lay there until it talks to you. I'm serious. Lay there until you feel this mattress is going to change my life, right? You're spending eight hours on this mattress, eight hours, right? Anything you do for eight hours, you have to love, not just like, right? So uh, the important things are you're in your shoes for eight hours or more. So you have to have a good pair of shoes. You're on your mattress for eight hours or more, right? You have to have a good mattress. You're on your pillow for eight hours or more. So you have to have a good pillow. Those are the three things that'll change your life, right? And the fourth thing is a good pair of socks. <laughs> I love my socks. All right.
Good pair of socks will change your life, right? You have wet socks. Good pair of socks will change your life. <laughs> good pair of dry socks will change your life. All right, that's the King's Down mattress. And so another mattress, this is a Tempur-Pedic. And so the Tempur-Pedic is pure foam mattress. Okay, so I don't recommend a pure foam mattress, but at the same time, as firm as you can stand. There we go. All right. So uh, a couple more things and we're going to wrap the workshop up. So when it comes to your shoes, right? I said for eight hours, you're in your shoes. So you need to have good shoes. So a normal wear pattern is actually like this picture. People say normal. That's a normal wear pattern. Yeah. So it's worn out a little bit too much, right? But it is a normal wear pattern. So your normal walk should hit on the outside, right? slightly on the outside and roll across the shoe to your big toe and then toe off. So that's the, the normal way that we walk, right? As we walk. And so uh, that is a normal wear pattern on the shoes. What would be abnormal is if we see one wear pattern uh, straight down the center and another pattern from the outside across, right? So if your wear pattern is, is different on both shoes, then that's a problem. So it might need to get adjusted. We need to adjust your feet, uh, something like that. Uh, and we'll need to look at your biomechanics, maybe get an orthotic in your shoe, right? So depending on uh, what it is, but an assessment will determine that. Okay, so when it comes to shoes, I wanted to show you four tests. I showed a, a girl in the office the other day, she asked, uh, what, uh, she's, she just bought new shoes and she said uh, the shoes that she's wearing now, uh, she's on, on her feet, uh, screening patients, uh, screening people at a nursing home that are the, the staff that are coming to the nursing home and um, the and uh, people that are coming to visit. So she's screening them for COVID. So uh, she said, uh, I like the shoes that I have, but uh, they're really hurting my feet after a while. So I said, well, you need to do four tests to see if a shoe is good, right? So these four tests, one time I violated my own rule. I was walking in Costco and I saw some Adidas that were $39.99. I said, give me a size 10 and a half. I just put it in the cart, right? I didn't even try them on and I didn't do the test. And you know what happened? I wore them one day and I was limping around the office for three days. <laughs> it was bad. So you have to do these tests on your shoes. So let me show them to you now. The first one is called the shelf test. When you put the shoe on the shelf, is it like stepped on? You know, is this part bent down, right? Does it look good when it's on the shelf? And if it's all mangled and everything on the shelf, it fails that test. Okay, so the next one is your, your shoe should have a stiff heel counter resistance. So when you press here, it should be nice and stiff, right? And this is good, this passes the test. Okay, so this passes the test for the, the shelf test and it also passes the test here the stiff, stiff heel counter resistance. All right, the next one is, uh, the next one is um, you shouldn't be able to wring your shoe out, right? So this is pretty good. You, this is all you should be able to do with your shoe, right? Just the toes move, but the whole thing can't be, be wrung out, okay? And then um, those, are, those are some tests that you need to do with your shoe. Uh, one, the last test here is your shoe should only bend at this point. Right, so right in this point where you toe off. Your shoe should never bend, and this is good, this passed the test. Your shoe should never bend right here. So let me show you a shoe that doesn't pass the test. Okay, these are shoes that people wear a lot. And so you can actually wring the shoe out like it's a rag. <laughs> you can fold the shoe up right in the center and put it in your pocket, right? You can completely close up the heel all right, and then it just fails the shelf test. So, you know, that's a shoe. I know people love those shoes in the summertime, but they really mess up your feet. Okay, so orthotics. Sometimes we need to give you an orthotic, and, and I got an orthotic, and I put the orthotic in my shoe, and it actually made those Adidas pass the test. So sometimes you just need a good orthotic. And so this is an addition right here. This is called a metatarsal pad. It's actually a pad that's in your, your shoes like that. Okay. So if you want to get fitted for an orthotic, just come to the office and let me know and I can show you the different uh, designs and everything like that. All right, so let's conclude the workshop with these last exercises. So here's an here's a, our chin retraction exercise. You're going to tuck your chin, not, ex not in extension, not in flexion, but straight back like that. Okay, that's called a chin retraction 
exercise. So what I recommend is when you go to the stoplight, all right, and it turns red, you stop, and you bring your chin straight back like this. Look to see if anyone's staring at you. Nope, you're good. All right, and then relax when it turns green, then just go. So that way the red light is reminding you that you need to do this exercise. This actually stabilizes the muscles. It's not the big ones you can feel, but the ones that are right up against the spine that actually uh, prevent movement from each segment, right? That give your neck stability, okay? So then the next one would be extension, right? So you see that she can really extend her neck. And she was our Pilates teacher in Oakville when I was working at a clinic up there. And she could actually bring her head back even further than that, right? But I didn't want to scare you, <laughs> scare you with the pictures. So she would extend back like that. And so you want to, you know, get up to about 90 degrees looking straight up when you're doing that exercise, okay? All right, so you'll see all these in your work booklet when you come to the office. And then we're going to do some neck rotation. So remember I said it's not okay to sleep like this for eight hours, but it is okay to rotate your head and just stretch gently like that. Another way, if you want to do it seated, um, you would actually uh, just turn your head and you can apply some overpressure, but don't hold on to the jaw, all right? Your jaw is movable. Just hold on to the cheekbone. That's stable. And you can just apply some extra overpressure that way. Okay, so then... These are some low back extension exercises, okay? So kind of like a, a yoga pose, okay? So that's a way to, in progression, to be able to get a little bit more extension going on in the low back. And uh, having a normal low back curve is actually a, a real good thing for biomechanics. But there was also a study that looked at the low back curve. The people that actually had a low back curve, uh, guys found the, the, the picture of the, the female low back curve that was ideal more more sexy than uh, someone who had a flat back or someone who, who had like a super uh, extended back. So the perfect curve uh, was actually uh, more attractive to, to uh, the guys in the study, right? So there's some perks to having a, a good low back curve and a, a good spine and good posture. <laughs> All right. All right, so uh, another one is bringing your knees all the way back. And so sometimes people will come in with like hip pain on one side or like your sacroiliac joint or your piriformis muscle. So if you ever hear me say that word, then that's like right on the side of the hip. And so you, instead of taking both legs and bending them back like this you, uh, and uh, flexing at the hip, you can actually just cross one leg over and bring it all, all the way back. And that can just stretch the one side. Okay, and so then remember the exercises that you can do, and so this is something you can do throughout the day, the day, just to kind of get some mobility in your spine. So extending back, this is a really good exercise using the block. So the blocks we have at the table, uh, you'll see the one block at each table. So you can actually just take it uh, when you come to the table, just take it and do some extension exercise over it. So with this first exercise, she's putting the block right behind her shoulders, right, and then bringing her head straight back. Okay, and then the neck exercise is she's actually going to extend. So this exercise helps prevent upper cross syndrome. So the upper cross is where you're really tight in the pecs. It's like the computer posture. You're tight in the pecs, right? Your head's further forward. Your pelvis is rolled forward. And so what this does is it mirror images all of that. So what you're going to do, you're going to extend here, right? Extend the hands, bring the hands all the way back. Right? Everything extended, you're going to extend your head and then you're going to take your bottom and try to touch the wall. Okay, This exercise, I'll show it to you at the table. You, you think it doesn't look hard, but it's pretty hard. You'll definitely feel it. Okay, So here's the dinner roll. Let me show you why someone would need a dinner roll. You see you start out with a good C-shaped curve and then the curve starts to straighten out. So you're doing someone's hair, you're working on the line, you're uh, looking at your cell phone, you're sitting at the front of the computer for a long time. Now the curve's going the wrong way. We take a posture picture from the side and now you're structurally shifting further forward. You see the discs, those are starting to close up now. The bones used to be rectangular building blocks and now they're starting to compress. They're starting to spur out and poke out, right? And then the person hunching even further forward. No one told them corrective chiropractic could help them. And so they continue further forward. Now they throw their hands back behind their back as they walk. You ever see people do that, right? walk with their hands behind their back because if their center of gravity uh, is shifted so forward, if their hands were in front of them, they'd tip over. All right, this guy, just, just a normal guy, 
he has neck pain. He's been working at the desk a lot. He's like, oh, I'm doing homeschool now. I'm working from home. Why is my neck so sore? He goes to see his chiropractor and his spine is straight on the x-ray. It's like, oh, man. So then we prescribe him a dental roll. He starts to do some exercises, lays on it for one minute, then two minutes, and eventually works his way up to 15 to 20 minutes laying on the dental roll. And now his spine is happy. Look at that. That's how we'd use the dental roll to help to restore curvature. It's not going to be overnight, but it can change. So I showed you that video about the, the guy laying over the dental roll and so how he would do it with the dental roll. It's a neck orthotic. So you see that the, the picture of her uh, laying on the dental roll, and then this is an x ray where they're not laying on the dental roll, and this is an x ray with somebody actually laying on the dental roll, right? So you can't see the dental roll in the picture because we're just seeing the, the spine, but you can see what the spine looks like while they're laying on the dental roll. And what this does, it helps to stretch the ligament out in the front of the spine to actually achieve that, that curvature change. So after about 10 minutes, the ligament can actually stretch. It's called visuoelastic creep. The, the ligament starts to creep on the down low. <laughs> it starts to creep, getting a little bit longer, and um, that's how the spine can actually change. Okay, When the ligaments and everything loosens around, you get adjusted. So there's really four things you need to do. Number one, get adjusted in a mirror image using corrective chiropractic. The second one is to start to stretch in extension, just to stretch these muscles out. Okay. Then the next thing would be to, now that we're loosening up the spine, you're going to tuck your chin straight back, that chin retraction exercise. And then the last thing is to lay on the dental roll. Okay. So based on your x-ray, I'll let you know where to put the dental roll. So they don't just sell dental rolls to people uh, unless you're under a doctor's guidance. So you have to get the dental roll from a chiropractor. All right, so if your chiropractor doesn't have a dental roll, uh, just tell them to contact me and we'll get one shipped out to you. Okay, so you see that the dental roll comes in different sizes. So we have the large, we have the medium, and we have the, the pediatric uh, version for kids. So you'll actually put the dental roll this part. So say your head's really far forward. We'll usually start you at a lower placement in the neck so you can get more extension, more stretch. And then uh, we can put it, maybe move it up based on what your x-ray looks like. But I'll be able to show you that when you come to the table. And we'll look right at your x-ray on the screen. So you can see the different placements. We have a lower placement. We have a middle placement. And then we have an upper placement. Not too many people are actually in upper placement. Uh, but the lower placement is where we'll start. And then for most people, we'll move you to the middle placement. And that can help to change the spine over time. Okay, so then when you're laying on the dental roll, the recommendation is to uh, start with one minute. So you'll see that there's a chart in your dental roll package, and it, it says to start at three minutes, but I like to be conservative and just start you at one minute. Because sometimes if you have a reverse curve going the wrong way, sometimes you could only do 30 seconds. Okay, but then you'll start to build up little by little, right? This is, this is going to be stretching the muscles, eventually stretching the ligaments a bit, right? Causing that creep over time. And so uh, with this exercise, you want to progress as slowly as you need to. But eventually, you're going to be up to 15 to 20 minutes when you lay on it. Some people can jump right up, up to it pretty quickly within, you know, 15 to 20 days, uh, doing one minute per day. Uh, adding one minute per day. And some people, it might take a couple months to get up to 15 to 20. Okay, so you'll see this chart in your booklet and you can actually, uh, per day, you can write down the days that you actually got there and what, the, what, the time, what time you did and everything. So it's a good way to keep track of it and that comes right in your dental roll package. Okay, so after you're done the dental roll, you're going to roll onto your side. So you, you roll onto your side and then you just sit up. Because if you've been extending for 20 minutes, then you go and contract the muscles, then the muscles might be a little angry at you. Okay, so just roll off to the side and then you can sit up and then you're good. So the, the recommendation, I say, you know, so I, I asked that someone, um, how's the dental roll going? And they say, oh, I forgot the dental roll. And uh, I, I tell them, okay, put it down on the ground and then on your yoga mat or something, right? And you see it, then you're going to use it, right? But maybe you might trip on it. Hopefully you don't. But if you trip on it, you're down on the ground already, then you might as well do the dental roll. You're down there anyway. All right, so just extend over the dental roll and uh, get your time in. But that can really help to, uh, to take away neck pain, right, to also uh, get the curve going the right way. So this is the mid-back. 
You see with the mid back, then you're, you're going to extend it. There's different positions, a lower, middle, and upper placement. Based on your x-ray, I'll be able to show you where it goes. But if you see anyone who's really hunching, then this is definitely something we'll want to assess them for and get them this exercise tool. So if this is something that you want to get, just give the office a call, and uh, we'll be able to do the proper assessment, uh, and then I'll be able to show you where you need to put it. And we can just take posture pictures, or we can get an x-ray and, uh, and be able to help you just take your health to the next level. This is a low back one. So the low back one is, uh, is really big, okay? Um, I found the low back one pretty uncomfortable, uh, but, you know, for, because I didn't need, it, need to use it, but for the people that, that need it, right, it should be able to help. Okay, so here is the traction wedge. So you can see how it tractions down on the forehead as the person starts to curve. And then this one is what you've been waiting for. This is the one that you stay till the end of the workshop for. So thanks everyone for staying near the end. So take, take a look at this. Do you see the x-ray, his head's further forward. X actually reversing, going the wrong way. Then he puts the torture chamber device on. <laughs> and he has the weight hanging from his head. He's even on a rolling chair. <laughs> Oh no, so this is not safe. <laughs> On a rolling chair, you have to do this when you're home alone. If you do, <laughs> someone opens the door and you go flying, not good for your spine. <laughs> so that's why, you know, the, the new and improved version is, uh, is using this and you'll find this one in the office so you can extend over. All right, but that's the one you've been waiting for. And so thanks for staying near the end of the workshop. <laughs> But you know, uh, uh, with massage therapy, uh, we did have a massage therapist, we're working on getting another one. And so massage therapy go hand in hand uh, with chiropractic. Uh, you know, I, I'm gonna be working out some knots as your head starts to come back, as we start to change your posture. So maybe we'll work out some knots after you get adjusted. Um, but the massage therapist can really do a good job at getting in there and we kind of work hand in hand like that. So with a hot pack, this is something that you can pick up at the office and you can use it at home. This hot pack is a moist heat. This is actually the type of hot pack that you would see in a physiotherapy office. But with this one, you can use it right at home. So this, uh, this, lady, uh, this lady in Costco, I heard her say, you know what, I went to the physiotherapist today and all they did was put a hot pack on my hands for, for uh, 15 minutes and then they said, have a great day. And I said, oh wow. She said, is that normal for physiotherapy? And I thought, no, it's not, but uh, uh, that was a bad experience. So you can just pick up this hot pack, right? And you can use it at home, right? But, uh, you know, physiotherapy is a lot more involved than, than this lady got. Um, but with this hot pack, you can just boil it. It's a moist heat, so it would, it'll absorb the heat. It's in the water, it's boiling 20 minutes. Then put it in a towel, wrap it up four times, put it on your back, put it, put it on your neck, put it on your back. There's different shapes, right? So this would be more of the, the rectangular shape. Right, we have one that, that uh, does fit around the neck, which is pretty good. Okay, so I'll show you that they do come in different shapes there. So you can see the one right in the, the center, that one goes on your neck. We can have a real big one, this one would go on your knee. Right, so there's different ones that, that, that we can get, but we do have the rectangular one and then the one that's made for the neck to, um, to go uh, right at the office. So you can just pick that up. Right, so this is the type of heat whenever I have a headache, but you don't have it very often. But when I do have a headache, then right away I start boiling the heat pack. Right, I put it on, then I go see my chiropractor, get adjusted, and I'm good to go. Okay, so moist heat is really effective. Moist heat is effective at, uh, uh, at penetrating deeper into the muscle, right? And it just feels more soothing. So it's actually steam and moist heat that's actually penetrating the body. So it's not just a regular uh, bean bag or uh, you know those, those type of hot packs. And it's not just one that plugs into the wall. This is actually a moist heat. This is used in a professional environment in the physiotherapy office. They boil it all day in a hydrocolator. So this is a type of hot pack uh, that you'll see in the professional environment. So you have the opportunity to actually put, bring it home, uh, get it from our office, and uh, just put it right into your, um, your medicine cabinet if you still have those, right? And this can be used instead of, uh, you know, getting through and having to take the medicine, right? So there's a time and place for medicine. You guys all know that I'm a paramedic as well. You know, I've saved people's lives by, by giving them drugs, right? There's a time and place for medicine and medication. Uh, but if you can go a natural way at first, right? And this is always your first resort to do something natural, like getting adjusted, like using heat, like using ice, those kind of things, right? Your medication does have its place and you'd see your medical doctor when it comes to that. All right, 
So uh, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to our posture correction workshop. Right? It's been it's been a good hour. Thanks for sticking here with me. And uh, you know, we, we did a good job. This will be able to help you take your posture to the next level. I hope you are taking notes or just kind of thinking in your mind, what kind of things can, can help my posture? Right? So if you have any questions, give the office a call. We can set up a consultation to be able to check your spine out. If you've never been to our office before, uh, then just send us an email and we can give you a special offer. Our info is info at solidfoundation.ca. So I'd like to thank you for tuning in to, uh, to the Posture Correction Workshop. And so as always, we're gonna build your health on a solid foundation at Solid Foundation Chiropractic.